Well, tell us about the time your dad took you to see Guar in 1992. Oh, he just dropped me off. But I got, uh, me and my friend Dewey, we got dropped off at uh, what then... No, it was supposed to be at Randall Studios the other way. It was, it was Randall Studio, but it closed down because there was like a fight the, the week before. So they said they weren't going to do it. And then it got switched to this place called The Scrapyard. And it actually didn't go on. The show didn't start. Like we, My dad was going to come back and pick me up at like 1130. And the show didn't start until like 930, 10. So like we got to see like the two opening bands and then like two seconds of Guar. And it was one of the coolest things in the world. Like just to see like, we got to see like five songs or something like that of Guar. Now did they spray the crowd with blood at oh, that Oh yeah, part? absolutely. But the place is about as small as like that glass part. I mean, it was tiny. Randall Studios, the original place it was supposed to be, was huge. It was like 1,200 people or something like that. And then it got smashed down to like a 300-cap venue. It was cool. And because we were little kids, they let us in. <laughs> and one of your first hardcore shows was with Sick of It All. Yeah. In 93. <clears throat> yep. What was that like? It was awesome. I mean, still tell the story. Like, we went, it was the River Rock, and it was uh, in Buffalo. And it was like one of the most terrifying like one of the most terrifying most like influential moments of my life like you're there and I was like a little kid and like dudes I knew from skateboarding were like beating people up and stuff like that and we saw them in a whole nother light and then it was just crazy man it was just one of the coolest things and like honestly like it just hooked me hook line and sinker and still sick of it all is one of my favorite bands of all time because that was like the first I guess recognized hardcore band I'd ever seen yeah, it seems like you experienced a lot in the early teenage years. Like you haven't yeah. had a drink since you were thirteen. Yeah, yeah, since I was thirteen, I haven't haven't drank since I was since I was thirteen. I got there was one time where I got like poisoned, or like we were playing somewhere, and this lady I got I ordered three Shirley Temples and she put vodka in them instead, but I ended up throwing it up. It sucked. <laughs> that was when you were thirteen. No, no, oh. that was like when we were in Ozfest, like that. It sucked. I didn't know I was drinking it until after, and then uh, Ken Susie from Unearth was like, dude, she put us, threw up all over the ground in the place, and that was the last, that was like, but it was like, not conscious of drinking, you know what I mean? So I, I got fucking poisoned. I should burn that place to the ground. Oh, man. <laughs> so the time you were drinking when you were 13, was that the night of your school's karaoke dance, or were you saying uh, Love Shack and Beat It? No, 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 it wasn't that night. Oh. No, no. I, 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 I literally only drank it was like one week, man. It was like my mom let me have, she would, whatever. I would always talk about how I wanted to drink. She's like, all right, here. And she gave me money, and we had like off for like exams. So the whole week, me and my buddies were just like drinking. And then at the end of the week, I was just like, yeah, this sucks. I never drink again. So what was your first band as a kid? The first band I was ever in well, I was in a Black Sabbath cover band for like a week. And then I got really self conscious about singing as I sang in it. Yeah. And I got really self conscious about it. And it, I don't know. So, like, that doesn't count because I really wasn't in it. But I was in a band called Spam Beach. Spam Beach? Spam Beach. And what kind of music did you play? <laughs> no idea, dude. We had no bass player. We had a guy that would play keyboards, and he played low notes on the keyboard. So it was like, I don't know how to explain it. It sounded like the Jesus Lizard, but like, Instead of a bass player, we had a guy go do. He would use like the the bass section of a keyboard. Spam yeah. Beach Reunion, probably coming out 2014. Look for it. <laughs> we were just talking about how you haven't had a drink in almost uh, 22 years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the writing sessions for X Lives, you drank a lot of coffee. Coffee. I drink an enormous amount of coffee. What inspired you to do that? Uh, Mars Volta. Like I read this interview with Omar. And he was talking about how they, this is a while ago, how they had written uh, Delousing the. Uh, Delousing use, the Comitorium? Uh, the Comitorium. Well, I don't know that one. And oh. I knew that Delousing was in it. Um, and it was right around that time, and he said that he would like smoke weed or, or do acid. He would write a song and then do that after, and then try to rewrite the song after. So I was like, well, I don't do anything, so I'm going to just drink coffee. That was like a stimulant. Because I'd never drank coffee before. It was like, just out of nowhere it was like boom coffee so imagine that like going from no coffee to like three pots of coffee a day busting out the riffs then it was awful because like I would just send them to Jordan and Jordan would send me these emails back that were just like please dude just you're killing me <laughs> like 40 riffs in one day do you still draw inspiration uh, writing inspiration from skateboarding videos absolutely absolutely I just started it was weird like because uh, 
that you brought that up, that Dogtown and Z Boys, that, that was like the that documentary was the one that I'd watched while we wrote Hot Damn or whatever. And I just recently bought it for my iPad and watch it every single night to like the, the thing is I, I, I Stacy Peralta had a way of like filming that movie that is just beautiful it's not like a normal skate video because it's a documentary and the the music that he picked for it was like he literally the soundtrack is perfect for that movie and that's like so when I when I watch it I kind of want to do that like a soundtrack for whatever's going on at the moment you know so I know you guys recorded X Lives in Pasadena. Um, what was life like? What was a day in the life like? You know, a lot of uh, Jersey Mike subs. Was there a cool pool at <laughs> the house Mike's, we stayed at? We did eat Jersey Mike's uh, subs once on that thing, but like we were staying with Brett, like Mr. Brett, and and uh, a life was like you'd wake up and uh, you'd play with his baby, and then he has a guitar. He has this like really killer Gibson acoustic that's always sitting there. You play that, you watch a little TV, and then you go in with Joe Barisi and you just hammer out with the coolest dude in the world. Like, literally, Joe Barisi's, like, hands down, like, for me, like, one of those dudes that, like, he's older and he's kind of a mentor because he knows everything that I like and I just suck knowledge out of him. I haven't met a person like that in a while. Brett's the same way. Like, me and Brett had some crazy conversations about just life in general, like, outside of music and... That whole recording process was was awesome. Moving forward a little bit, um, right now you guys are on tour with the Acacia Strain. Yeah. Um, I did an interview with them in 2010, and we were talking about haunted venues in America. Mm-hmm. Um, and Vincent Bennett said that he saw a ghost in the restroom at the Masquerade in Atlanta, Georgia. I have a quote for you. He said, uh, "There are a lot of haunted venues in America, and they're full of ghosts that will make you not pee." Have you seen any ghosts on tour? I don't know. I mean, we see in like okay, there's this place in Detroit. Right, the St. Andrews Hall is a venue in Detroit, and they have a deal where, like, if you play the venue, you get like forty or fifty percent off this one hotel that's downtown Detroit. And it's supposed to be haunted. There's a, the fourth floor is like closed or something. And we stayed there, and when the first thing when we went, we were like going into the the uh, into the elevator, a, a, this crazy lady with a with a butcher knife came running at us. And like slashed into the thing, we had to like, oh, shit. like start smacking our arm. We were like punching our arm and stuff like that. So that was real weird. And then when we were upstairs, uh, some crazy shit happened. Where me and Keith like woke up in the middle of the night, and we, the TV was on, and it 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 appeared that there was a camera in the bathroom showing the the bathroom on the TV, and then it went blank. And it was the one of the that was really scary, but that like place is supposed to be really haunted, but never at like a venue or anything like that. I mean, not that I'm aware of, but there's always like little weird noises and stuff like that at venues anyway. So you never know; they could be ghosts. I do love ghost adventures a lot, so <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I know you've known the Acacia Strain for quite some time. Um, uh, what's up with the show in 2007 with the Acacia Strain and Shadows Fall with, with the KKK dude? Oh my! What did he bring that up? Did Vincent bring that up? No, I thought everybody knew that. Really? No, yeah. that was insane. Tell we us were, about like, that. We were playing, and I don't remember who the hell was talking to. Maybe it was Josh or something. Our old bass player Josh was like talking to this dude, and the guy started bringing up this like KKK shit. Like, oh, we could use someone like you, and we kind of like pumped <laughs> up on him. We were just like, get the fuck out of here! Like, tried to like fight this dude or whatever. And then we thought about it. We're like, do we really want to fight a dude that's part of the KKK? Because they're gonna burn us alive, <laughs> something like that. So that was just that night was so fucked, man. Because there was this chick. That was the first time we ever met the Acacia Strain. Was that that, not that the show before that, and uh, that night there was this like stripper chick there that was like with the KKK guy, and he was like trying to like not prostitute her out, but he was like pimping, like. Oh yeah, hey, she, yeah, she'll do anything, man. And then she ended up on Shadows Falls bus, like naked, with her legs spread. And our buddy Jim Bridges was with us, and she had a tampon in, and a string was hanging out. And there was a picture, a memorable picture, where they're holding each of her leg, like, like, like this, and like she's looking off into like, like this. And Jimmy, Jim Bridges, like, like this in the picture, like staring, like pointing at the string or whatever, like that. 
And then she passed out, and they just left her on like a flat before they left, <laughs> like outside. Just left her on a on a, like, like a, on a, on a on a pallet or whatever, because she had passed out and they had to leave. It was nuts. That day was crazy. Where the fuck was there was an alien head on the side of the venue, <laughs> like an enormous alien head. And you know, like my one number one like rule for like tattoos is like never get a tattoo at a place that has an alien head in the logo because you know it's going to be terrible. And this venue had a huge alien head on it, Lexi, like Lexington, Kentucky, or some shit like that. Man, it was crazy. Speaking of whoring people out, uh, how does that particular situation compare to uh, Hamburg, Germany, with your sound guy? Oh, yeah. man, he's been taking a beating on this because of the podcast. He said the podcast. I just said his name. Just put like a uh, Rob Zombie Yeah over that or something. <laughs> but <clears throat> God, he comes up to me. He's like, oh. I don't know what to do. He was wasted, dude. It was like six in the morning, and uh, and all I was all we were it was a me make to amend, me make to amend. Uh, some of the guys from Save Goals, and all we were doing is just walking around the red light district. That was it. But yeah, obviously none of us like partook. But we were like, I have a girlfriend. And fucking everyone had girlfriends, you know. So it was like whatever. So we were just walking around, and yeah. comes up out of nowhere at fucking. It was like six in the morning, and like he just like, I want to go in, check the biggest tits, <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, walk in there and say exactly that, okay. And then next thing you know, like, forty five minutes later, he comes back to the bus like, with his buddy, and like he, they, the fucking security guards ended up booting him out and fucking throwing him down a staircase or something, like that. It was awesome. <laughs> oh man. So has there been a show that has topped the Fort Wayne, Indiana show? The one, the one with never. the crowd surfing garbage never. cans? Absolutely not. Ever. That's never going to happen. The other day we had some garbage cans getting thrown around. Jordan had a fucking garbage can on his head by the end of the set. It was in Lawrence, Kansas. It was great. But it still wasn't as good as that. Dude, okay, not only this, but we would post the pictures of Jordan with a fucking garbage can on his head. And a dude posted, like, yeah, I definitely threw up in that garbage can. <laughs> like all the gross wetness that came out of it was puke. Oh my god! And he didn't shower that night. Changing the topic a little bit, let's talk uh, about the current metal scene. Um, there, there's a quote from you that I found, and it said, uh, "Well, you said that there's a fine line between metal and pro wrestling. Can oh, you absolutely. can you elaborate on that? Well, okay. Here's the thing: like you take a band like Black Breath, who's like the they are from to me. Personally, they're like the epitome of what metal is. They are true. Um, they look the part. They play the part, and it's it's awesome. That's the way metal should be. Like, look at a picture of Cliff Burton. That's metal. Like, Cliff Burton was. He should be in the in a, in a in a dictionary as that's what metal is. Is Cliff Burton? He was fucking awesome. Nowadays, you have these fucking boners who like go into like fucking hot topic and buy those pants with the fucking buckles and shit and they have like horrible goatees like long goatees like fucking color in them and like fucking eyebrow piercings and and they look like fucking pro wrestlers i mean they're like that's that's what it is oh we're fucking metal man we're fucking metal and all of them like there's a there's a huge thing because all all metal dudes are just guys that tried other things and didn't make it so like when fucking hair metal was big, oh man, like I have big hair and fucking, you know, stonewashed jeans and stonewashed jackets and, you know, they're fucking dressing, you know, wearing eyeliner and stuff. And then that kind of like waned out and then like grunge happened and then they kind of just all started like growing their hair long and not wearing them at things. And they, you know, they got the boots with the fucking pants and the, the flannels around their waist. And then that kind of goes out and then new metal starts and now they're like wearing like these baggy jeans and they got fucking spiked hair and tribal goatee tattoos and fucking you know just shitty and then that weans out and then like metal gets popular again like you know you know bands like uh you know fucking i don't know i'm trying to think of like a, a band in general like but anyways, they you know then metal becomes popular again. But it's like now like we're fucking badasses and we uh you know we're badasses and we we're dark and fucking you know what I mean? It's just like, dude, ten years ago you were a hair metal guy, and like that's the th they're just all trying to adapt to what's cool, 
and none of them have ever stuck true to what they are. So now it's like this weird hodgepodge of like hair metal, grunge, and all that. They look like Kane, the fucking pro wrestler Kane. They have fucking, you know, it's just like shot and they're walking around on stage. Always like wearing like the fake fucking arms. And, you know, the thing is, the reason why all of us play this shit is because we were nerds in high school and this is where we got accepted. So we all ended up here, you know what I mean? But they can't admit it. I can admit it, you know what I mean? Like, the reason why I play guitar is because I didn't get along with anyone else, so I played a guitar. I mean, that's literally it, you know? And those dudes can't admit it, and they think it's like a comic book. It's it, That's all it is. They just create a life, and they let people think that's how it is, but it's not like that. Like, So, yeah, that's metal to me. <laughs> Going back to high school. <laughs> Going back to high school, uh, you still want to be a ballet when you grow up. I always wanted to be a valet. And still to this day, like, I'd love to, like, maybe for, like, a day. Like, be a valet for a day. It sounds... It's awesome. It's, like, you just sit around and then drive a car for two seconds and then sit around. It's perfect. Like, literally, like, you want to be lazy, go ahead. Be a, be a valet. It's awesome. You know? And I'm sure at some point in time I'd probably do some scummy move and steal a car and sell it or something. <laughs> still cool man you get to drive every car you can see how you literally can test drive every car so you can actually be an authority on that like your friend's like oh I'm gonna buy a RAV4 like alright well that's cool and then oh what's wrong well, I, mean, I drove one the other day and a stick you know it's awesome it's cool I don't even like cars I'm not even a car guy but valet just always seemed you know what it was like in the 80s in 80s movies valets always got lucky like it seemed laid. like they always got laid. Like they were always like the hot like cougar wife was like, oh, this guy's cute, and then they would end up with it. And that's kind of like I, maybe that's why. When I was a kid, I was just like, well, okay, obviously that's what I want to do because those dudes get lucky. <laughs>